Hello, I'm uh, Paul Beckwith. I'm going to talk um, about uh, a report from the Center for Climate and Security. The um, report, which just came out uh, in February 2020, is called Exploring the Security Risks of Climate Change. So, you know, people often talk about, you know, global average temperature rise of you know, we're, we're well over a degree now, a degree, two degrees, three degrees, four degrees. And one of the problems is that, you know, the general public um, doesn't seem to understand um, that th those are huge numbers and those have huge implications for the planet. And this is because, you know, in the course of a day, the daily temperature range could be you know, uh, 20 degrees Celsius, for example. So, you know, we're used to seeing these sort of changes on a daily basis. So, in, so, so this is one of the key issues that needs to be overcome <coughs> in terms of communicating the, the uh, grave risks that we have from climate change. And in a number of recent videos, um, I discussed the, you know, what is on a lot of people's minds, the coronavirus and the connections the impacts that the coronavirus is having to reduced industrial production um, in China. And uh, now that's spread, of course, uh, to other, many other parts of the world. So how, how you know, it's, it's um, the coronavirus spread is, is uh, really slowing down industry. It's slowing down air travel. It's slowing down all kinds of things. And, you know, these things are trickling. Like this is a massive sea change in the, um, in the global uh, financial systems and, you know, how we do things. It, it's like a, a tipping point. Um, and I'll look, I've also talked about in these previous videos about how, you know, climate change is making the risk of these type of viruses popping up um, much, much higher. Um, so I'll talk a little bit. after Now, um, this report, which just came out, in, in February 2020, exploring the security risks of climate change, of course, it doesn't mention, um, you know, any any virus um, disrupting, uh, you know, the global system, disrupting humanity. Um, it doesn't re relate it to climate climate change. Uh, but I'll so I'll talk a little bit about the. Um, effects of the coronavirus towards the end of, you know, what possible growth rates might be based on what we've seen so far. So let me get right into um, this report. So this is the website, the Center for Climate and Security, Exploring the Security Risks of Climate Change, Security Threat Assessment of Global Climate Change. So this is the report, uh, which, I'll, you know, 86 pages. So I'll just talk about the highlights, some of the figures Etc. And uh, just make you aware that it does that it that it's, it it exists. So this, in combination with the J.P. Morgan report, which I discussed a few videos back, you know, it shows that the 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 risks that we face now are becoming more and more recognized by and and acknowledged by mainstream bodies. And you know, this is. Um, you know, the, the changes in climate are just so much in your face that, you know, people are recognizing the risk. So now what are we going to do about it? What can we do about it? So I mentioned the daily temperature range also, or daily diurnal temperature variation. So the, the um, daily, mac if you take the daily maximum temperature, subtract the daily minimum temperature, then you get the diurnal or daily temperature variation. And uh, it varies a lot depending on where you are. So if you're in high desert regions, they get very, very warm during the day. And because there's no clouds, there's no moisture sources, the, the sky is clear, the heat radiates out to space at night. So the, they drop to fairly low temperatures at night. Um, you know, here's an example, 38 degrees Celsius during a summer day and lows of 5 to 10 Celsius at night. So, you know, this is a range of, 
about, uh, about well, 28, um, 20, 28 to 33 or so, okay, Celsius. You know, you can look at a city, Washington, D.C., which is more humid, temperature variations of only 8 degrees Celsius, which or 14 Fahrenheit change during the day. Hong Kong, um, you know, 4 degrees Celsius change. You know, at the equator, there's very, very little change, 12 hours of uh, sunlight and 12 hours of, uh, of uh, darkness, you know, not accounting for, for the twilight. Okay, so... You know, if we're used to these large swings during the day, then, you know, global average temperature rises of, you know, a degree or two or three or four doesn't really mean that much to the average person. And yet it's hugely significant, um, you know, as, as you know, as you've been following climate. But this is, a, this is an issue to, to figure out how, to, how we can get that information out. So this is a, a map here, um, daily temperature range around the planet. So very, very low temperature, daily, daily temperature range changes um, near the equator, the equatorial regions here. And then you go, um, you know, north and south and you get large temperature ranges, large temperature swings up to, you know, over uh, up to 20 degrees Celsius. Um, difference between daily high and daily lows in these regions. And then when you go up to the Arctic, because of the ice and the frozen nature, um, again, the, the, the daily temperature swings are lower. But without the ice there, the, the, the swings will be um, you know, qu quite, quite high as well. But the sun angle is so low, you know, even, even in the summers. You know, and if you get 24 hours of, um, of, of sunlight in a region, then you wouldn't, you'd expect a very, very small daily temperature range. So that explains those effects there so the point of you know one degree one and a half two degree global temperature rise is is misunderstood still by a lot of people um, so and uh, I'll just uh, this is my website paulbeckwith.net so you can find my videos here on the coronavirus effect on global warming and global warming impact on pandemic risk so like I said this and, and and this is my uh, YouTube channel. Just Google Paul Beck YouTube Paul Be Paul Beckwith, and uh, you know you can see the videos. Um, no skating. I think the skating place that I was in on last weekend. Um, watch this video if you if you want to just enjoy you know a, a, a skate through the forest with me. Um, it was open for for this morning, but I I didn't get a chance to go. But I think that might be it for the year. Um, okay, so getting into this report, um, it looks at how likely warming scenarios indicate a catastrophic security future. Okay, so February 2020, and it's produced by the National Security, Military, and Intelligence Panel on Climate Change, and you can find the details on the you know, previous website about the people involved in doing this. So. Um, I'll just go to some of the plots and things. Okay, these are, these are actually some of the people on, on the board and um, in this group that were working on composing the report. And basically what it does is it looks at different regions of the planet um, as they're designated by the security community, the, the U.S. military, so divides it up into sort of AFRICOM, Africa, CENTCOM, Middle East, U EUCOM, Europe and Russia, Indo-PACCOM, Indo-Asia Pacific, NORTHCOM, North America and the polar regions, SOUTHCOM, South and Central America, and the Caribbean. And then it looks, it takes all of these regional um, change, re regional threats, and looks at the global threat, um, and and so on. So. Basically, um, you know, these are national security, military, and intelligence professionals, decades of experience, and they analyze, anticipate, analyze, and ad address security threats to the United States with the goal of protecting all citizens from harm. Okay, um, and, you know, strikingly, there, there's nothing in here about the, uh, you know, 
the the about pandemics uh you know the coronavirus um you know it came out in february you know it, the the virus has been just tearing through different places um since um since january so it's just happening so quickly so it talks about climate change being an evolving and multi-dimensional threat um and uh, the impacts of climate change have the potential to destabilize human life at all levels. Okay, so they look at this through a security lens. And even at scenarios of low warming, um, each region of the world will face severe risk to national and global security in the next three decades. It's happening now. Higher levels of warming will pose catastrophic and likely irreversible global security risks over the course of the 21st century. So basically, if global emissions are not reined in, the world will experience destabilizing changes in both the near and medium to long terms that pose significant threats to security environments, infrastructure, and institutions. Low levels of warming the areas hit the hardest are those that are already the most vulnerable, dry and arid regions, least developed countries, small island states, and the Arctic polar region. Okay, fragile regions, destabilized, huge effects on northern industrialized regions, and so on. Okay, so I'm not going to, basically, so there's a couple different scenarios. Um, on high-end emissions trajectories, warming levels could reach between 2.3 and 4.1 degrees Celsius, which is between 5, which is converted to Fahrenheit, 5 to 7.4 Fahrenheit over pre-industrial temperature levels by the end of the century. Um, and uh, so there's, um, you know, we could reach 2 degrees, it says here, as soon as mid-century, and 4 degrees as, as soon as the end of the century, but, you know, two degrees uh, could be, you know, by mid-century, um, you know, I think it's good, you know, it's, we're, we're getting much closer to two now, you know, with, certainly within the next decade, um, I think, you know, mid-century is a bit conservative. Okay, so, you know, it looks at the threat assessment, you know, how climate change interacts with physical, social, and political systems to create and intensify security threats. So the, the climate security nexus, and it looks like I said at the different regions and then at the globe. So let's look at, so the near term scenario that they're discussing is one to two Celsius warming um, and the time frame between now and, and 2050, reaching the high end of the spectrum as soon as mid-century. So again, I think this is a bit conservative. It doesn't account for tipping points in the Arctic, et cetera. Medium, long-term scenario, two to four Celsius warming um, by between 2050 and 2100, okay? So it looks at these two scenarios in all of the different regions and it rates the risk, you know, low, medium, high, very high, catastrophic. So high, nothing's in this category even now, high severe risk to human social and security systems, very high severe and systemic risk to human social and security systems and catastrophic, disastrous and irreversible risk to human social and security systems. Okay, so, um, so in the near term scenario, we have a high to very high threat already Okay, um, and in the medium to long-term scenario, the two to four degrees warm Celsius warming, very high to catastrophic threats already. And this is kind of the, this is the near-term scenario, one to two Celsius warming. And it shows the different regions of the world, like NORTHCOM, you know, North America, the Arctic, um, and so on. And the, the risks are medium high, you know, mostly in the northern hemisphere and high to very high in, you know, the southern hemisphere. Um, you know, so these regions are less able to deal with it. You know, for example, in the Middle East, dangerous temperatures, water stress, fragile straits, authoritarian and proxy conflict. You know, and you can look at the different um, threats to each of these regions. I'll continue. Thank you for listening.